There's only one player in this whole world who has the names of two of the greatest players on earth, named after Pele and named after Maradona. He's a Ghanaian and he's a legend of Africa who we'll be talking about today with uh, historian Yao Machi Frimpong. Welcome, my name is Kafui Day, and today it's the turn of the story of Abedi Ayu Pele, African legend. It's good to have you here, uh, Mr. Machi Frimpong. Thank you, my brother. Today we're talking about um, Abedi Pele. Yes. Uh, let's start right from the beginning. Who is he? And why is he important to African football? Very important. Very important, especially for the fact that he's coming from the northern part of our dear and beautiful country, Ghana. <clears throat> he comes from Nania village, mm -hmm. so close to Burkina Faso. This man nearly became <laughs> Burkina, Burkina Bay, Bay. <laughs> but God gave him to us. Now, he was born in 1964. He had his primary education in Accra. A lot of people familiar with Green Hill at Achimota will be familiar with Abedi Pele <clears throat> and will note Abedi as a very small boy who was playing course from this gutter to the other. He plays here. Mm -hmm. The next moment when the, man, uh, the match got, gets finished, Abedi will look for another place where they're playing football and go and play. Almost everywhere in Accra. And Colts football is like junior Colts, football. Junior football. Junior football, football. Okay. Everybody knew mm -hmm. Abedi Pele as something like area mm -hmm. in football. Mm -hmm. Somebody who always mm -hmm. smelled where there was football. In Ghana, you say Bolube. Bolube. Yes, okay. always looking for football to play. <laughs> okay. So that was Abedi's character. Okay. At a very tender age, but 15 years, he was actually scouted by Real Tamale United and sent far away to the north from his comfort zone, Accra, and was also put to a, a Tamale secondary school. Unfortunately, I won't say unfortunately, let me rather say incidentally, he couldn't finish the O level because of the talent, the very career God gave him. He played at RTU, as I have said, alongside those days, great names like Mahama Inlai, the free scoring Mahama Inlai, Cho, Mohammed, Gokipa, Damba, and a few others. He was great. That was a team that had uh, Anani Kobo, mm -hmm. Karimu Starboy, PMK, Kusi. They were all from the north. Now, he also became. Uh, at a very early age, a member of the Black Stars of Ghana at the age of 16. I would say that he possibly is the youngest player to have done the Black Stars JC. Only two, Mohamed Polo. Mohamed Polo holds that record at the age of 15, having played for his national team together with the word Pele. Mm -hmm. You know, only these two players at age 15 who ever played for their national teams. In the case of Ghana, I say that Abedi is second at the age of 16. And I remember in the last match Ghana played before we qualified for the African Cup of Nations where we won in 1982. Mm -hmm. in Libya. He came as a substitute for the captain, uh, Adolf Ama, who was then about the best dribbler on the continent. And so when he got injured and we played outside the country, they were laughing at Ghana because when Abedi Pele entered the field, the shots was almost down the knee. Halfway down his, his yes, leg. Because, Very they, baggy. They never anticipated that such a small boy would play for his national team. So they didn't make a custom-made uh, Jesse mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. And when he entered, as I said, they said, hey, Ghana didn't have any player left again. And they brought a small boy. He got the ball, <laughs> chested it, and started dribbling everybody on the field. Yeah. And Abedi Pele, in all his interviews, says that was the match he ever remembers most. He was known as a dribbler. He was a dribbling mm -hmm. magician, mm -hmm. just as uh, 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 Mohamed Polo. Mm -hmm. He was so aggressive, and it was because of his aggressiveness. You know, the word Pele was a great footballer, all right, mm -hmm. but was not as aggressive as Maradona. And that was why Abedi 
even though he was named after uh, mm -hmm. Pele, mm -hmm. also had the accolade Africa's mm -hmm. Maradona because yeah. of his aggressiveness and then for his goal scoring prowess from very acute and uh, 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 unassuming angles, mm -hmm. he also had the Pele. So he played as, as a forward, as an attacking midfielder. I mean, he was attacking versatile. Attacking midfielder mm -hmm. and would come and join the defense when he felt that mm -hmm. Uh, things were going bad. Mm. In fact, when he was with RTU, he ca carried the team on his shoulders because he played almost everywhere mm. before he left the shores of Ghana to play for the Dragons of uh, Benin. Benin. And then from there, he played, uh, he went to Al Saad on Arab land. Mm. Then from there, he went to Europe. He played for several teams like Lille, uh, Marcel, Torino. Uh, 1860, Munich, Munich mm -hmm. you know, and then came back to Arab land uh, Al Ain before he ended his game or his career. But I would say that it was at Marcel that he really established himself as one of the greatest footballers of all time. And uh, 31 years ago in 1993, he helped Marseille to win the UEFA Champions League. Yes, where he played together with this against AC Milan, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. together with this great Avorian player, Basil Boli. Yeah, Basil Boli. Those, those were the days of Marseille. Well, those were the days of mm -hmm. Marseille. And in those days, they had Papin, yes. Pelé, Waddle, mm -hmm. the magic three for Marseille. And then we also say that in the 90s, Abedi Pelé's goals mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. almost always mm -hmm. featured in goals of the week, mm -hmm. in Europe, goals of the week. Mm -hmm you find mm -hmm. Abedipele's goals mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And then also we shouldn't forget that mm -hmm. also in the 90s, Abedipele featured many times in World All-Stars, the best 11 players mm -hmm. in the world. He was always there. Abedipele was always there. Do you, would you reckon that he kind of opened the way for African players to, to, to go into Europe and, and do their thing? It is good you've asked this question. When you read the Encyclopedia of World Football, you see Abedi Pele's grand photograph. And underneath is written, the man who sold African football in Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, we've produced great players like Roger Mela and then uh, Poku from Ivory Coast. And then even in Ghana, mm -hmm. uh, Razak, uh, Polo, C.K. Jamfi, and so many others. But it was this man, Abed de Pele, who actually sold African football in Europe. And what I mean is that immediately they saw the trend of football Abed was playing, unstoppable, unsurpassed on the field. European scouts started visiting the continent, and then others also had their way. No wonder. Uh, he is selected as the third greatest African footballer of all time for the last century. Mm -hmm. The first, obviously, uh, Liberia's George Oponria. The second was Roger Miller. Yeah. Second, because he went to the, the World, World Cup, Cup and about two or three times, and Abedi was never ever there. And then Oponria, you know, also won the world's best footballer. And uh, our man never went to the World Cup, so he was placed at number three. But at least uh, we'll console him for the fact that he became the first African footballer to have won the uh, African highest award three times mm -hmm. on the trot, mm -hmm. 1992, 93, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. 94. Mm -hmm. And indeed could have won more, but for his own mistake. In those days, before you'll be selected as Africa's best footballer, you must have seen to be somebody helping your national team. Abedi had a little row with the handlers of the Black Stars, you know, in one of the uh, international, uh, what do you call it, assignments or transfers, better word transfers. Uh, Abedi felt that the GFA had taken some money which had directly gone to him. So for some time, he was not playing for the national team. All the four or five years that he missed playing for the national team, he also missed the African Footballer of the Year. Mm -hmm. So I believe that if he had actually played for the national team earlier, 
Abedi's record couldn't have been beaten by any player. What do you reckon? I mean, we can only speculate now, but imagine Abedi Pele at one of the World Cups back in the, the day, maybe the 80, 82, 86, or 90, 94. Can you imagine what kind of impact he would have made if he had taken us to the World yes, Cup? Yes, if actually he had had the opportunity. That one, I would not blame him because even this man explains. Mohamed Polo, he spoke about the fact that in those days, you always played home and away, home and away. It was not, and then eventually, one of the teams that sees you qualify will find a way of robbing you no matter what, especially if the second and the last round happens to fall in their country. Like what happened to Accra Hasso Folk mm. against Union Douala, you know, because the last leg was played over there. We all know what happened and what happened to Asante Kotoko. Many times they went to play in Africa, you know, and the blasters, it has happened to them many times. Until recently, when so many innovations have made it such that it becomes almost impossible to rob another country. Look at the last World Cup how we qualified against Nigeria. If it had been decades ago, uh, ago think definitely could have things would have been very different. Mm -hmm. Nigeria would have qualified because they were hosting the last of the two rounds. Yeah. Look at, let's look at uh, Abedi Pele's family. I mean, he comes from a footballing family. I mean, brothers mm -hmm. and sons. Mm -hmm. He didn't go to the World Cup, but his sons yeah, did. It's a very beautiful family. Yeah. You talk about he himself being the eldest, and then his... Mm -hmm. Younger brother, who was a striker for Black Stars, uh, Kwame Ayu, and the youngest, Sola Ayu, who played for Accra Hustle Folk, and very briefly for the Black Stars. So here you will see that it is a family that has produced three children, mm -hmm. all having done the national mm -hmm. colors. Mm -hmm. Then he himself, too, has done a great service to the nation, which Maradona couldn't do <laughs> for Argentina, and then uh, the Pele. Pele couldn't do for Brazil that he had three children done in the national colors. Uh, Rahim Ayu, and then uh, Dede Ayu, and then Jordan Ayu. In fact, with the three, I will say that that record is only beaten by the Paha brothers. In the case of Ayu's children, you know, two of them are from the same mother, the Dede and Jordan. Jordan. And then the first born he had when he was a student at mm -hmm. uh, Tamale Secondary School, a bad boy. You mm -hmm. know, he had that child, you know, from a different womb. You know, that's the only way we we'll say the Paha brothers will beat him. PSK, Paha, Isaac Paha, Collins Paha. From one mother, one father, all three playing for the national team. Mm -hmm. Black Stars. Black Stars. Mm -hmm. Zema boys mm -hmm. from my area. Mm -hmm in the Western region. They beat Abedi when it comes to the Abedi brothers, the younger brothers. Yeah. Why do you think that a lot of Ghanaian sports fans have a thing about uh, Abedi and his sons and they seem to put a lot of pressure on his sons and you feel that there is some animosity that has been taken, is being visited on them because of their father? Yeah, it's good to ask such a question because when you talk about history, we talk about wars, we talk about bloodshed. It's not always sweet, it's not always palatable, but we have to say it. You know, uh, it turned out that in his days as captain of the Black Stars, even before he became the captain of the Black Stars, some of them, some of, some of us who liked football so much, knew the way Black Stars captains were always selected. You see, you will play for the team for a certain period of time. And then when you are on your way out, they honor you. You are honored as the captain. From there, you leave. Did it make sense? And I mean, why are you honoring me when I'm leaving? Don't you yeah, want a vibrant become captain? Become the senior most player. So then, it was mainly, mainly based on age? The senior not, most. Not on leadership qualities? Not on, and most often than not, the senior most is a very experienced person who was big, good, old, smart. But not and, necessarily a leader. In fact, that was the trend, and they were actually doing well until it came to the turn of Kwesi Apia. Mm -hmm. And then during the 1992 Senegal 
92. Afcon. You know, in he, Senegal, yeah. Very good. He was supposed to be the captain. And indeed, he was the captain. Who was the captain? Who was supposed to be the captain? He was, the captain was Kwesi Apia. Apia yes. And they stripped him of it on the, on the protest that Kwesi Apia could speak only English language. Mm -hmm. And Abedi was bilingual. Could speak French as well. Could, could speak French. And that was also the ban. Because in the Ghana match with uh, Nigeria, the semi-final match with Nigeria, you know, the referee at a certain point whistled foul against one of the blaster players. And Abedi Pele, the captain from nowhere, went to stand in front of the referee and said, mm -hmm. that is a very French mm -hmm. language that brought him into the team as captain would also send him off the match mm -hmm. so that he would not be able to play. Because that, that, that was a second yellow card. Second yellow card. So he completed the game. But was unavailable for the was final. Was unavailable for the final. Mm -hmm. And in fact, all the 22 players, less Abedi Pele, were equal. And it ended in that marathon uh, penalty kicks. And if Abedi Pele had been there, I believe that uh, things would have been okay. different. Everybody knows things would have been different. And it was like, and like, so, like that beat Ghana. In that 92. beat Ghana, yes. Mm -hmm. And as you know, from that moment, the love of Ghanaians for him started waning badly. And then comes this famous player, Tony Yabua. And we are told that uh, the team got split into two. A section of the players followed Tony Yabua, and the session followed Abedi Pele. And these two players also uh, played for the national team for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So you would agree with me that uh, match after match, we lost glory because I saw it myself when Ghana played the German national team. You know, we were winning. Then Abedi was not in the team in the beginning. He arrived late and Tony Abua was wearing the captain's band. You know, the moment Abedi arrived, they stripped him of the band and gave to uh, Abedi. But, 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 but wasn't that captain. the protocol? Because the, the captain is Abedi. If he comes, you have to give him the band. Uh, but those who love uh, Yabua would also say that it's a form of pride, inhumility on his part. Because once your friend, your colleague is already wearing it, you don't lose anything if you play as an ordinary player. But we don't have to go deep into it. Mm. But uh, Bokom, you remember the Bokom yes, massacre? The, the, when, yes. Yeah, because of the division between the two players. Even when one of the best players in the world entered the field, that was where Germany started scoring, scoring mm. all because uh, Yabua's group will get the ball and they will not give to Abedi's group. And so, the Abedi so. group, and that was what affected us. And when his children also entered the national team, definitely it will follow them. And that is what has happened. To now. And I believe that uh, very soon it will end. Was, was it fair though? I mean, why should they visit uh, perceived wrongs against their father on them? They are different people. Even the Bible says that our fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. So it's there that the moment people see you as coming from a certain angle, they add certain accolades to it. Mm -hmm. You know Julius Caesar? Yes, the Roman Emperor. The, yeah, the Julius Caesar, that book mm -hmm. uh, by William Shakespeare, mm -hmm. there was this poet you know, who arrived on the scene. Because one of the conspirators bore his name. They said, oh, that's the man. Let's tear him into pieces. And he said, no, I am seen as the poet, not the conspirator. No. And then immediately they changed it. Tear him for his bad verses. Tear him for his they bad verses. They had to find a reason to, kill, to no. deal with him. And then they killed yeah, him. Just because of the name he was carrying. So, you said, it's as simple so as that. So the Ayu brothers are carrying the, the Ayu name. And so people would just not like them because of that. Certainly. What do you think his finest moment uh, in Ghana football would have been? Would you think it's the 1982 AFCOM that Ghana won against all odds in Libya, of which he was a part? No, I would say that match, uh, that tournament, mm -hmm. we all know he was a very young person. Mm -hmm. And most often than not, he was only coming in as a substitute. Mm -hmm. But the 1992 African Cup in Senegal, mm -hmm. the semi-final match Nigeria. was actually the final of the finals. Mm -hmm. a very beautiful match, world-class match. And even the interview he held, 
you know, he said at a certain point when the yellow card had been shown him, he knew he was not going to play in the mm. FANA and he felt he had to carry his team to the FANA. Mm. And there was an occasion, the last, the, the, game, the goal he scored, mm -hmm. you know, there, there was an occasion where he had the ball and he said that if I release this ball, I don't think it will come back to me and it will end one all. And as for penalties, you no, can't... No, it's rest. a lottery. Yeah, so he was at a very odd place, far away. He, he became the player who had the man that released it to mm -hmm. me. And he, when he had the ball, he said, I should not release it. I should just score. And indeed, he did it. He achieved his mission. He achieved his mission. Mm -hmm. became the greatest footballer then, the first of his... I mean, the first of the accolades mm -hmm. to be won by him successively. And we all saw him, when they carried him up, he was crying bitterly. And his beautiful wife, also in the stands, Ma, mm -hmm. crying like a baby. <laughs> when he was crying. Yeah. Which, of his, which of his sons do you think took more uh, after him in terms of style of play? Oh, it is the first born, mm -hmm. uh, the second born, mm -hmm. the Dayu. Mm -hmm. you know, he was very aggressive mm -hmm. on the field. Right. And he always wants to play, even if he's sick. Yeah. If you put him in the match, he will play. And also he looks like the father. So yeah. I say he's the one who takes after the father. Rahim is good, but we know that he's very uh, lazy with the ball. Mm. You know, he takes his time. Mm -hmm. No, Abedi is exceptionally aggressive. So team. he won lots of, he won the UEFA Champions League, he won the, the CAF uh, award three years in a row, BBC African Sports. Uh, the, first, play, the first, the more it was introduced, mm -hmm. Abedi Pele became the first, the first player to, win to it. have won it. Indeed. Uh, France football, African footballer of the year. So many accolades. Mm -hmm. Even won an order of the Volta Silver Division yeah. from the government of Ghana. Yes, he's, he's an awarded man. But there's some controversy about him and his team as well, because he, he, his team is named after his village, Nania FC. And remember, a couple of years back, there was some controversy over that over the team. Yes, though the Nania team wanted to enter the Premiership, mm -hmm. and they also knew another team playing somewhere. <laughs> you know, so and because one only one will be chosen, you know, the one with the highest number of goals definitely will be the one that will be chosen after they had the same points. And they had the same points, mm. so they had to score. And that match, do you remember the number of goals Nadia scored? 31. 31 nil. Yeah, 31 a nil. Against Okoye United. <laughs> and, and I mean, Okoye was a good team. It's a good team. In fact, uh, Coach Samade made a very strong observation mm -hmm. in the 90s, which I remember. He said, if you bring the best team in the world against a secondary school team repeated to be the worst team in the world. For as long as you have 11 players each and they are playing for only 90 minutes, it would never be easy to score 11 nil against the worst team in the world, which is also an underage team mm. in practice because they also cover the ground. The ground. Yeah. Number two, they are also each of each player is matching another player. And then number three, you know that even air occupies space. <laughs> For as long as each player is occupying a certain space, it is not easy to walk your way through or run your way through to put the ball behind the goalkeeper. Thirty-one times. It is. I mean, he says even 11 times, <laughs> it's not. Now to talk about 11. Mm -hmm. So the GFA for, saw through mm -hmm. what was at stake. And that was what brought uh, a bit of disgrace mm -hmm. to Abedi Pele. Mm -hmm. Because a man like that knew how to accept defeat in dignity. I don't qualify. So what? It is a better team that must always win. Mm -hmm. And that is what the world expects. You know, but if you want to win at all costs, I remember one of our lecturers at the Ghana School of Law, uh, the late Mr. B.J. Daurocha, he ever said that a lawyer who wants to win every case is a crooked lawyer. So it's not all the time that you must win. Mm -hmm. At a certain time, you must lose. And that loss would even be indignity. Mm -hmm. Napoleon didn't win no. all his battles, no. but he's still repeated to be the greatest soldier in history. Is Abedi Pele the greatest um, Ghanaian footballer of all time? 
the documented, the greatest Ghanaian footballer mm -hmm. of all time, mm -hmm. documented. But our elders tell us that uh, years ago, when African football was not known to the Europeans, we had players like C.K. Jamfi, Agrifin, Osei Kofi, Baba, Yara, and many more, you know, whom they said were far better than Abedi. But because in those days, you know, they were not going to Europe. You know, it was only when you go to Europe that you make a name, you are seen in the world, mm -hmm. and you are recorded as such. We had so many great players. So when you talk to people of the world, Abedi agreeably is Ghana's greatest player. When you talk to people of yesteryears, those who are 70 years or more, they will tell you that they came across better players. So in answer to your player, let's just agree that he was our best. Uh, even though I believe that uh, he might not even come near Osei Kofi or, or Mohamed Polo. This like year he turns 60 by God's grace. Uh, what is his contribution to African football and Afghanians giving him, him his due? I believe that his contribution to African football is known and accepted that if a whole world encyclopedia of football would acknowledge you as the man who sold African football in Europe, the same uh, 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 <coughs> the encyclopedia, you find Odate Lamte's picture as the greatest juvenile footballer ever to have emerged mm. in the world. No. So you see that Abedi has been honored by the world. Africa has honored him. The fact that he was selected as one of three greatest African footballers of the last century, Africa has done enough. In the case of Ghana, I say no. And it is one of the reasons why we are suffering. You see, if we have players like Abedi Pele, who have seen it all at the world stage, also means that They've got a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Abedi, Asian, uh, name them, uh, this one, uh, Jan, you understand, Osai Kofu, Tony, Yabua, mm -hmm. and many others yeah. who made it at the world stage. I believe that these were those who should have been empowered to become coaches for the national team mm -hmm. and chairman for the GFA. Ghana Football Association. Ghana Football Association. And the reason is very simple. They've been trained by the best coaches in the world. Indeed. So with very little tutelage, it becomes easy for them also to handle the younger ones. Yeah, and I've already played for, with over, over, over 10 different teams all around the world, yeah. like Saudi, Europe, Africa, everywhere, Ghana. Lots you're of talking coaches. about ASEAN? Yes, and ASEAN too, and, and all Chelsea, those guys you're talking about. Yeah, so, so with the, best this practice. class of, when he's handling the national team, mm -hmm. or if he is the football association chairman, chairman mm -hmm. like uh, Zambia, the, the most celebrated mm -hmm. player, Kalusha Bualia, Kalusha Bualia mm -hmm. became the football association mm -hmm. chairman. It will be difficult, if not difficult, rather go high, impossible to say that Abedi, ASEAN, Jan or Yeboah has accepted money mm -hmm. or demanded money from a player in order to fix them. You would never hear such things. But because, because those who have handled our national teams, either as FA chairman or as coaches, have almost invariably been less endowed than the players we are talking about. Mm -hmm. It becomes easy for people to think that, oh, the one on the field should have been sitting down mm, here. But and this one sitting that should have played. But because he is mm -hmm. mentioned a name, uh, this man's player or that man, oh, I should have been here, but they mm. wanted money from me. I believe that if our teams are handled by any of our world-class players, nobody would be able to talk about suspicion, so they'll you, go away. You'd have loved to see Abedi Pele as a um, black star coach or, or GFA the chairman. chairman. And still it's not late. I believe mm -hmm. that we must change this trend because uh, look at this uh, Okreku. You know, he has got his own team. Mm -hmm. 
you understand. And when uh, Kwesi Nyantechi was there, he was also the owner of, uh, is it that team in the North? Wow, wow All-Stars. All -Stars. Yes. Now, being human, being human, when you are the GFA chairman and you also have your own team, you, in the first place, you set up the team in order to make profit. But you know, the argument when also is that Abedi also has his own team. Nania, he could have also been, also been taking players from his own team. The counterclaim for Abedi Pele is mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. he is so well and endowed established, and established, and established and okay. that you, you can't say that Abedi... And then also, because of where he reached, mm. you know, he doesn't feel anything bad if you are coming after him because it mm. will not be easy for you to be Africa's best player mm. three times. Mm. So he will feel good pushing you there to succeed him. But the rest would always have that suspicion tag against them. Mm. I'm not saying it is true or false. I'm saying it is bad for them to be there because football is a business for those who have actually been there before, at least for our level. I believe that is what it should be because whoever is coming, like in the days of SK Menu, the famous SK Menu of Asante, Kotoko. Mm -hmm. You know, he became GFA chairman at the same time the owner of Asante Kotoko, more or less. So it was always easy for this man to be said that he favored Kotoko, Kotoko players. players. Right. He did it. But if you are coming from the trend we are talking about, I believe uh, we should try and then exemplify that and see, and it will help us a lot. So, After other African countries are doing it. Mm -hmm. So in your view, do you, you think he still has some contributions to make uh, to Ghana oh, football? This man is mm -hmm. just about 59, mm -hmm. 60. Mm -hmm. Just about 59, 60. Mm -hmm. He can be a coach, or if he will not be a coach, he can be advisor to whoever is a coach. Mm -hmm. He can also be the GFA chairman, chairman mm -hmm. because over there, he will not be running on the field. If only he's not inter he's interested. That's the whole thing. Oh, there was a time he contested, and I think he lost to the late Kofi. Mm. Uh, Kofi okay. he so lost back to then he was interested. Back then he was interested. And because uh, people came in with that argument, mm -hmm. that's why, when I say that argument, between he and Tony Yabua, that is the reason why uh, people did not like him much. You know, and then Tony Yabua too, the same. So the time has come, I believe, when the a, a, a football institution in Ghana should go back and invite such players. See, uh, Cameroon at a certain time in its life invited Roger Miller from pension to come and play in their last World Cup, mm. one of the last World Cup, the one where they were able to beat Argentina. At that time, Roger Miller was a pensioner mm. and they brought they him, him. and so he did so well for them. And I believe that even when Abedi was on pension and Yabua too, the last match, one of the matches we played in the, I think the first World Cup that Ghana ever featured against Brazil. 2006. Yes, where Brazil scored mm, so many goals. Mm. I believe that if we had Tony Yabua and Abedi Pele coming in for just about 20 minutes, there would have been magic. I bet they would have been, would be, 1964 to 2004, he was like 42 years old, man. And this, you see, yeah. when Abedi gets the people like that, yeah. they will not be able to run much. Yes. But taking the ball from them, be be, and then also somebody like Yabua, when you find him in front of the goalkeeper, yeah, do stuff. throwing the ball yeah. away would also be difficult. I mean, it's like the way they use Miller in his old age. Yes. They brought him in for the last 20 minutes. And he and always he came to deliver. He, he came to score. To deliver. He always came to score. Indeed. What, as we wrap this conversation up, what will be some of the key lessons that uh, listeners can take from the life of Abedi Pele, who started from very humble I beginnings love the way and, you ask your and rose questions. to the highest you level? Take me by surprise. Yes. At the same time, you make me learn. Thank you. And I have to say it that it's a great question. And the answer will be a great answer for young people who are coming. It was Ghana. That made Abedi Abedi. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been a world class footballer. So, if it turns out that you have a problem with a small fraction in Ghana, a subset of Ghana called the Ghana Football Association, that should not lead you to be angry with the entire nation to the extent that you decide not to play for the national team. And I mean, in the mid 80s up to the end of up to 1991, 
he was not coming because he started. Do you know we have the same age? He started football. Sorry, form one the same year. Mm. I completed form five in 1984. So when this man started form one, 79 to 80, 81, and then up to 82, he played in the Libya African Cup, Cup where Ghana won Indeed. the last time. Mm -hmm. From there, he fizzled out until 1992 because of that anger. And I saw it myself because I was growing up with him together. And any time they tried to call him to play for the national team, the simple answer he gave was, go and see my manager. And then he will leave the interview. Go and see my manager. Young people must learn that this is not a good behavior. You must always be a matter for your country. And then also when it comes to insubordination on the field, like where he was shown the yellow card, the level, the peak he had got to, the apogee, the gamut Abedi had got to, should have taught him that you do not challenge a referee's decision. Because there's another game, the most important game after that game. What, whether <laughs> important or not mm, an important just game, don't you challenge. know that the referee yeah, was the, the chief suit. examiner, yeah. everything on yeah. that, you, you could make and make you. Yeah. And back then there was no VAR too. No VAR. Yeah. No, but this one was insubordination <laughs> on the on field. The pitch, yeah. you know, to tell the referees and the powerful, that yeah. means you have given a mm, wrong mm, decision. decision. Mm. So I believe that we all need to, and then at a certain point too, uh, in interviews, I heard him say, I don't like English football. English football does not enthuse me, mm. you know, and I believe it's not a good statement. English rules the world. And ironically, he's put, two of his sons ended up playing in England. England, English. <laughs> so I believe that Abedi's life is something that should be learned by us. And then the bad ways which affected him as a person and then turned out to affect our country. We shouldn't learn. And I think if he has the opportunity, he will have to go around like Mr. William Oforia Tapawili. Before he died, he became a Christian evangelist, moving from primary school to primary school, telling people the good things he had done for Ghana, the bad things he had done, mm -hmm. and what children should learn, learn to do. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Pong, for delving into the history of Abedi Ayu Pele, possibly Africa's greatest footballer. Do you disagree? Put them in the comments. Who do you think is the best footballer Africa has ever produced? Um, love to hear from you. Uh, till we meet again, remember, if you haven't subscribed, do so immediately so that you hit the notification bell. And when the next video comes up, you will know that it has arrived. Uh, so that's uh, Legends of Africa, History Time, with Yaanachi from Pong and myself, Kafui Day. See you in the next video.